Good morning everyone, welcome to Aginacraft. On today's agenda, me, the mad scientist, trying to figure out how to build a mold without actual screws, holders, or anything involved. So what you need to know is that I got this uh, polycarbonate sheet from a, from, a, from a shop which was closing down and they had these Anyway, they had these sheets of pre-cut, really bad they cut polycarbonate sheets, and I realized that silicone doesn't stick to it. So I was thinking, instead of buying the expensive, you know, melamine sheets and sellotape it all over and, you know, work with that, what if I get my old piece of 2x4s, put sellotape around those, and then silicone them to the mold thick af from both sides apart from the long ones because i just can't and put some pieces actually th this is funny this is a board like this right and this is an oak board so what i done with this is i got my lovely lovely svetlana and I went to town. I hammered it up and I broke it in four. So, and I silicone it to the bottom and then I silicone, because this is the straight line. So this, this part of the wood are squ is square, square, okay? So I used this as a starting point and yeah, I just, I just made this uh, mold with, uh, with some silicone. And now I'm waiting for it to dry. I'm not going to touch it today. I'm going to let it completely harden until tomorrow. And tomorrow we're going to do a pour and see if it's even possible to homemade a massive mold without any power tools, cutting tools and all that stuff. Yeah, so you're probably going to see it in a second. I'm going to wait today. I'll see you guys then. All right, gang, it is late in the afternoon and I checked the silicone and the silicone appears to be completely dry and hardened and all the borders are in place, not really moving. So I'm quite happy with what I have here. And I also had a look around the colors and I have some gold, some copper, some brown copper champagne gold which is i think it's kind of rose gold and yellow orch ochre or ochre yeah yellow ochre anyway so i have these colors and i've never done a table like this so this is gonna be my first time i just had enough of the greens and blues and everything so i'm gonna hit it with this and then we're gonna turn the oak black. So, you know, we're gonna go black and gold. You can't go wrong with that, I think. Anyway, we're gonna test that this in this round, right? So I'm gonna mix up some resin and I'll see you guys in a minute. Don't worry, I'm not gonna start mixing without you. That's the best part of it anyway. Um, so I got the, I got all the mica in the, in the resin. And I think it's time to see what we made. You ready? Okay, here we go. Here goes nothing. Okay, now. Let's do some pouring, I think. Let me just reposition the camera for you to, to, to see it better. All right. All right, janky as heck, but yeah. I tried to do it from the side angle, but I have a, a cheapest tripod, which is flimsy as hell and it doesn't want to stay there. So we're gonna do the usual. Okay, you guys ready? All right, here we go. Oh. Here is nothing. 
Lead. Okay, so this is a kilo and a half, and this is not enough for a tabletop. Who would have thought? It's time to make some more. Well, I found some more gold, so another kilo and a half. Go again. This is looking good. Well, good morning everyone. This is the next day and I have my coffee. Anyway, good news. This thing did not leak. So basically I have this polycarbonate sheet or plastic sheet and I used some silicone to add these planks to it which I covered in tape, as you can see just to make sure that it creates a barrier and then I waited for it to dry somewhat and then I poured into it so basically my message here is you don't need an expensive mold you don't need to have squares and, and and screws and you don't have to do hardcore carpentry to get this thing done because basically just just you know you just put it together and first you put the board in so this will give you the square right because this is a this is a square board so yeah anyway Long story short, it's working. Now let me put you on a on a camera holder or something, and let's take this apart. Let's see. Let's see what we got. Talk about framing. So, whoa, okay. This was. somewhat easy all right fun fact the silicone didn't cure fully let me just put on some gloves yeah. I only have two hands I don't need three I'm so happy I figured this one out. Actually, the idea came from a guy who commented on my rent video. Shout out to you, man. You know who you are. Um, he said that he, how he make molds is that he, he buys HDPE sheets and uh, he glues them together. So he gave me the idea to try to use these sheets I have. All right. 
Alright, gently, gently, gently. Is this silicone or is this? Yeah, this is silicone. I'm not sure if it's silicone or the epoxy, but the epoxy is hardened. Okay, so we got the second one. Sip of coffee. Oh my god, I need this. You might be able to hear that my dog is complaining. Oh no. Some of the resin didn't cure. Hey again, good morning. This is Monday morning. I think uh, this is day number four on this project and I am safe to say that I have messed up the first batch of resin. Uh, oh, I think I put way less harder, hardener in it than I was supposed to and this is what I've got. As you can see, it's still squishy. Not sticky, but still squishy. And because of that, I wasn't able to remove it from the mold without destroying the mold. So, yeah, because it was like still tacky and all that shit. But interestingly, as you can see, the lighter gold, that's a good, that was a good mix. So, it's, it's funny, it's, some of it is uh, still squishy and some of it is extremely hard so we are going to salvage this today or salvage as much as we can i'm gonna bring it to the workshop and hit it with an angle grinder and a sanding disc and many of you said that you like watching me doing that so i'm gonna set up the tripod in the garden and I'm gonna make a time lapse with nice music and everything, and you can see me clearing this shit up. And you can't hear me swear because there will be music. Anyway, I'll see you guys then. Yo, welcome back. Camera has been set up on the lovely tripod. I got the angle grinder out. Now, few things, all right? Do as I say and don't do as I do because I'm a crazy person and I basically lost my feeling to touch to these fingers and i lost the feeling of touching so nerve damage i have all over my hand because i tend to harm myself and damage myself so long story what i want to say is if you use angle grinder use the guard okay please god for god's sakes use the guard i'm not using the guard because this disc is oversized <laughs> and i wasn't able to get the correct size of disc so hey it is what it is hand protection wear some some proper gloves thick ones and eye protection face protection because the debris these industrial diamond particles will fly everywhere okay so do that and also a trick life hack as the big youtubers say you know this is the opener key for this fucking thing i zip tied it to the cord and i can't lose it yay anyway so let's get the music going and let me start grinding away oh yeah by the way this is squishy like uh like a gummy bear right so this is gonna gunk up my disc pretty much destroy it and i don't know how much i can remove it i mean of that so we'll see how it goes all right so yeah music on and i see you guys in One third is done, checking the disc. It isn't then gunged up as I thought it will be. So, yay, I guess. Anyway, back to the music. So, 
I'm not sure where I'm going with this. This is a 40 grit, which I'm gonna hit it with to try to level out the top. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it raw wood or I'm gonna flood coat it. We'll see. I wanna level it out first and then have a good hard think about it. So now, again, music and me sending. Lemonade break, I'll be back. And I'm back. I had to elevate my lifestyle to the level that I deserve. <laughs> I just, my back was killing me. I sending in a 45 degree angle. One thing I learned guys, make sure you're comfortable while you are working. On a long run or uh, in a longer time period eh, you know what I mean shit how my back was hurting anyway so so far what I've done is I hit it with 40 grit and I wanted to remove the the angle grinder marks as much as possible from the wood specifically and uh, I know what is the lesson of this video already so what we're going to do is I am going to remove these. I, I, I'm, I'm sure you can't see it, uh, but there are like these grinding marks on the wood because of the angle grinder and me going to town on it. I'm going to remove that. I'm going to teach you how to use iron acetate or how to make iron acetate and how to use it to turn white oak into black. And then I am going to build a dam around the perimeter and fill it with epoxy resin as a leveling coat. I learned it from construction when you have an uneven floor surface, you just pour concrete into the room and you, you just let gravity do its thing and you level it out. And once that's done, I'm going to send that up to a nice smooth uh, finish. And I'm going to do a flood coat over that to have it nice and shiny. I think that's the way I'm going to go at it. So, yeah, I'm going to do a bit more sanding off camera because it probably it's like being like, even if I speed it up 10 times, it's already been like three, four minutes of this video. Uh, I'm going to speed it up, send it. And I'll see you guys when I do the coating or when I do the acetate part, All right? So, see you in a bit. Well, hello back dear viewer. I had to change scenery again because outside it's almost like 38 degrees centigrade and I'm sweating like, uh, uh, I can't say that on YouTube, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so it's very hot outside, I had to come in. And kudos to you, because you made it this far in the video, and it's probably a half an hour already. So, in exchange, I will teach you how to make the magic juice, which smells like Satan's butthole, and turns every white oak into an ebony black wood surface. Okay? Now, you get some cheap vinegar which I don't have on hand, so I can't demonstrate it to you. So get vinegar, imagine I have a bottle of vinegar in my hand, okay? And pour that vinegar into a jar, like that. Then grab a handful of steel wool. The thinner, the better, because it will dissolve more easily. And shove that steel wool into the jar. Now. When you do this, make sure that it 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 like it, it's you have more vinegar than steel. That's what I'm trying to say. And then put the lid on it. Make sure you don't tighten it too much, 
because there will be gases escaping sulfuric smelly gases so try not to keep it in the middle of the living room when i did when i what i did so anyway when i did it first time in the winter i kept it on the on the fire fireplace mantle because hey my life is a workshop so anyway i kept it there and i was like what the fuck is this smell what is this smell i thought the cat did something in the living room so i was hunting like turning the couch over and, and, and Anyway, I'm rambling. So yeah, keep it a little bit uh, open for the gases to escape and keep it in an area where you are not usually are. And uh, let it be there as long as you want. Minimum of three days. Okay. I have this estate sitting on the sun for about, I don't know, three or four weeks now. And... guys i had a handful of steel wool in it and there is nothing in this liquid anymore so the iron dissolved into the acid and when you i'm just going to show you when you brush this on the wood it will react to the I don't know what's the name in English to the acid inside of the wood fibers and oxidize them which will turn the wood black uh, it will turn the wood black if it is oak white oak or something with that lot of acidity like walnut or something like that so I'm sorry guys, I can't, I can't remember the acid, but I will, you know, I'll, I'll put put the text here. But if you have like a piece of, uh, you see, it's turning immediately black. So the liquid is clear. So well, it's not clear anymore, but yeah, it's like, 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 like brownish, reddish, you know, and turns everything black. Um, and it won't turn all kind of wood black. It depends on this uh, acidity level of the wood. For example, it's a piece of spruce, okay? And if I put it on, it won't do anything because the spruce doesn't have that uh, chemical in it or not that much. This is beech, hardwood. Let's just give it, give it a minute and see what it does. Um, uh, what else do I have? Mahogany does nothing. So yeah, your mileage may vary. Ah, oh, beach turned into gray. Your mileage may vary, but white oak with this vinegar stuff, and you got ebony black, and you know like ebony wood is illegal to get or something like that and what i usually do okay i wait for this to dry the first coat and i hit it with like three or four different other coats and you i don't know how long you've been watching me or have you seen other videos on my channel but i done two other projects <coughs> excuse me i did uh, two other projects using this technique i made an ocean wave coffee table with this black technique and I made a serving tray that was the first experiment and that was a silent video so I didn't talk over it and uh, yeah anyway this is one of my favorite techniques to turn wood black and I think it will go very well with the gold next to it yeah and if you if you hit the epoxy with it don't worry about it because it doesn't react to epoxy. So basically you just use a, a, an alcohol rag and just wipe it off really in the end. Um, I made a, I, I had an accident. I don't know if you can see it here, but I cracked this piece of wood in the beginning. So that's going to be there. Am I just going to use a Sharpie to hide it? Yeah, I'm going to use a Sharpie to hide it before I flood coat it. So anyway, uh, yeah. This is this part of the video, and according to smarter people than I am, this juice has a shelf life of a year or something. 
Now it's it smells bad, but yeah, keep it in storage. I don't know what's the shelf life. I can't I can't say it is or it isn't a year. Uh, I've been topping it up, putting new steel in it, topping it up, putting new steel in it. You know, so it's a it's it's you know it's like the soup in the Middle Ages, the never ending soup that which they put uh, in uh, in. Uh, Oh my god, I wanted to say so many words at the same time, I just stopped working brain-wise. They had a tavern, they put a piece, uh, a pot of stew on, uh, on the fire, and uh, they served some of it out, then they put some water in it, put some meat in it, and then served some of it out. So it was a never-ending stew, it was always cooking, there was always new stuff in it, and there were, there, the people been always been served from it. So this is kind of like the never-ending stew of my... <laughs> oh, 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 my workshop. Anyway, uh, I'm rumbling. I'm sorry about that. I I should keep on. You know, I I shouldn't talk this much. But sometimes, sometimes it's just fun to share stuff. Anyway, I'm not gonna waste your time anymore. This is what's gonna happen, and uh, I'll see you guys after like three or four coats. Hey guys, new scene again. I came outside because it dries faster here. Um, I got the three coats of Iron Estate juice on it, and as you can see, it's drying up very nicely. The next step, once it's completely dry, I will hit it with about, uh, let's say, uh, 120 grit of sandpaper. And I will make sure that I sand every inch of the epoxy to 120 grit and get rid of the swirl marks and then I will create the dam of some kind around the, the edges of the board and then I'm gonna get a, a level surface which is gonna be hard because here in Greece petals uh, diagonals uh, levels are not a thing everything in this country was built by eyeballing it so yeah finding a flat surface here is gonna be a challenge anyway i'm rambling on again i'm so sorry uh yeah i will build the dam around it and i will pour the clear resin into it to level it out and then flood coat sanding i don't know we'll see we take it as it comes. Uh, see you guys later. Citrep again. I send it 120 grit and I managed to send off the blackening. So I had to reapply the blackening material. Why am I, why am I speaking weird English? Acetate. I have to reapply the acetate. And again, I forgot to wear gloves. So I have this lovely tint on my hands which will not come off only if I just soak it in soapy water for like an hour anyway bath time will bring it up uh, take it off but yeah learn from my mistakes please do as I say not as I do I fuck things up for you so you don't have to experiment experiment on yourself anyway wear gloves that's what I'm trying to say gloves that's very important I'll be back once it's done and we go from there and this is gonna be a long video I remade the mold so uh, yeah so where was I where was the last time we met send it to 120 grit applied the juice again then I cleaned off the excess then I remade the entire mold again from pieces of wood and I didn't use any screws nails or anything it is just attached to this acrylic sheet with a plastic wrapper on it this time I put a plastic wrapper on it so it should be able to release easily anyhow made the mold again siliconed it from both sides and I put the piece in there and I will wait for this to harden and then I will pour a coat of clear on top on the whole thing so hopefully it will go a little bit underneath as well so it's gonna square out you know just just 
yeah so square out enough uh, I will do the pour in two parts because I wanna I wanna make sure that it goes in everywhere and levels out before I so I don't want to put too much on it and I don't want to put not enough on it so therefore I'm gonna make a kilo spread it out and then see how well it seeps underneath you know and uh, when it gets tacky I just pour the other one on it and hopefully that levels it out if anything else happens meanwhile I'll let you guys know for now this is rusting and uh, yeah this is this is Monday today and uh, one of the videos I made the rent video has just blew up and I mean kind of a shock right now because 13,000 people seen it and I got all these comments and not a single one is nasty and everybody is so nice and 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 everybody is so supportive and I just made a post writing everything out about it so yeah check that and I'm on the verge of crying because it just feels so good that that people actually listen and and people think that I have some value to add to this world and anyway uh, yeah it feels so good um, so I'm gonna go back and ponder all about my life while this one is drying and I'll see you guys later yo guys I'm so professional I was halfway recording the previous video when I realized I'm half naked and we both know how YouTube works. Nipples are no no. So I put on a t-shirt. Sorry about that. It's extremely hot here. Right now I don't have an AC. This is a shed. And it's 30 something degrees outside. Anyway. So this guy is looking fairly alright. I degreased it and I removed all the sand and particles and everything. And just keep flying back to it. What I'm gonna do now, silicone has cured, which is fine. I'm gonna mix some, mix up some epoxy of the medium fast setting kind and pour it in <laughs> and pray to the gods that it's not gonna seep out anywhere. Okay. Now, it's time, time to disco. Wow, that's such a Hungarian reference, you were never going to get this. Anyway, poor time. Don't worry about the bubbles, they will disappear, hopefully. Opa. As I said, always wear goddamn gloves. You know that you can become allergic to this shit and your skin will literally peel off. Like the worst case of eczema you ever had. So, gloves, guys. Seriously. I'm a lazy bastard, so I don't wear gloves, but I should wear gloves and I should wear my PPE mask. I, I actually have a beautiful 3M mask. And uh, when, I, when I make stuff for my shop to sell, like when the whole shop is covered in epoxy, I'm wearing the mask. Now I'm talking, I'm not wearing the mask. But yeah, please, please, just be careful, okay? Your health is more important than having fun or even making money, okay? <laughs> Especially when you are in the States, as I heard, getting sick in the US it's actually an extreme sport. Like Jackass and shit. 
So now I'm just I'm just helping it to spread out a little, you know, just break the surface tension because now it's bone dry and uh, epoxy likes to go where epoxy already is. And epoxy don't like to go where there is no epoxy doing before. So basically, you know, just just flat the whole thing. And uh, this is the point I'm going to put some gloves on because I like to squishy squish it. I'm like a four-year-old in a mud puddle. Let's make a mess. Yeah. Say whatever you want, but this is the most satisfactory thing ever. Playing around with the epoxy. Oh my god, I love this. This is just so satisfying. Oh my god, I forgot to permanent marker the wood. Shit. You know, I had the crack in the, in the board. And I said I'm going to put some permanent marker on it before I pour it. Well, I forgot. But not to worry. Because this... This is going to be my unique signature. This crack will remind me of all of you guys sending me the lovely messages, which I was extremely humbled by and preoccupied answering them. So I forgot. Doing it. Sorry. Okay. So that corner is lifting up a little. Okay, you know what? I don't care. I'm just going to cover the whole thing. Like so. And this guy will eventually level out itself. Okay, I promised I'm going to do this in two pours anyway. This is the furthest thing from straight. And I think I have a leak. Yes, sir. We have a leak on the board. Okay. I never had a leak before. Panic time. So what do I do? I can use some hot glue or my silicone. I'm gonna start with silicone. I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Let's do this. Try to save this. I can't see shit. Okay. Don't leave this right now. Huh? Can't see a damn thing. Okay. I think we saved it. Knock on wood. I'm so scared.
All right. I'll be back. Quick checking in. A little bit more leaked, but nothing serious. Interesting thing when the curing epoxy and the soft silicone gets into a reaction, the silicone immediately hardens out into this uh, goopy white mess which is good because it seals immediately so that's one thing i learned and this is how we are looking right now what you guys think cool isn't it so we're gonna wait for this to dry and then i'm gonna i'm gonna take it out of the mold and sand it a little, add a little flood coat to it. And this crack will always remind us that this community born. <laughs> this is the day when the maker community born here on Agina Craft who help each other out and goes against the consumerism. Anyways, I'll see you guys when it's done. Well, good morning, everyone. This is another day on this project, and hold on. Got to wipe my lens. No, still foggy. Anyway, new day. I put... I really don't want to lie. I put about... Two, 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 one and a half. Then one. Then two times 400 grams of epoxy resin over this piece of uncured wood now as you can see it has bits dings unevenness because i didn't wait until the previous coat of resin was almost completely cured I actually poured fresh batch of resin on half cured epoxy and it results don't know if it picks up on camera hold on let me just let's do this okay now hold that can you see this here the fo focus oh come now focus here so when you see this and this, this is what happens when you put fresh epoxy into, into like uncured epoxy. Uncured, on, on uncured epoxy, I mean the viscosity of an egg. Uncooked egg, I mean. So when you pour fresh epoxy, this is what happens. It dissolves the previous layer somewhat and tries to bond with the half bonded polymers long story short i was reckless again i was trigger happy again at least i don't have any leaks which is good um and i think i was able to save the uncured uh, orange <laughs> epoxy in this now I wanted to keep it as a flood coat, but as you can see here, here, and here, I have micro bubbles and I have uneven finish. Now, I think this project will be great to show you how I deal with this kind of stuff. Because I saw many YouTubers and many professionals dealing with this. But, uh, yeah, I have my own ways as well. It's not good enough. It's not It's not as good as like, like Black Death Studios. Because that guy is just literally a fucking god. Okay. Doing this. And uh, kudos to him. He is like, he's like one of the best human beings I ever, ever had the chance of knowing. Not knowing, but seeing, anyhow. So, what I want to say is, this is going to be a great, great chance for me to show you 
how do I refinish epoxy resin? I am so sorry about this. My puppies are going nuts because somebody is walking by the gate. Okay, they finished. Sorry about that. Come on now. Can I talk, please? Okay. Carry on. So, what I'm going to do with this is I can finally, I, I have a chance to show you how to finish epoxy instead of flat coating. So I'm going to sand it down, get rid of these all these dints and dings and dents and rough it up. Then I'll show you what I do with this. I'm not going to, I'm not going to blue boy you. I will probably either get my angle grinder in or I will get my uh, electric drill. But if you have a Dremel, that's much better. Okay, so do Dremel if you have that. I, I don't have a Dremel because it's bloody expensive here. So I have my electric drill and I will drill holes until I remove this bit, not touching the wood, or as deep as I can go without touching the wood and not ruining the whole piece. And I will refill it with epoxy and wait for that to dry. And then I will work my way up from whatever grit I start on up to 5000 grit then I'm gonna ha hit it with a polisher guys I just bought an actual automotive polisher and I think I managed to buy the shittiest cheapest ugliest battery powered uh what you call it car polisher on the market ever because I refuse to spend $300 on a professional polisher machine from Festo or Devault or whatever. <laughs> Not in hell. I can buy 30 kilos of epoxy of that money. And it's, it's, it's a thing which goes in circles for heaven's sake. It shouldn't be 350 euros. Anyway, rent over. No, not renting. Not renting. I bought the cheapest one. We're gonna unbox it whenever it gets here and uh, see what we get for 50 euros. And we, we might be able to get some mm, shinies out of this table. Also, uh, later on, I'm gonna show you how I managed to get my hands on proper table legs for barely any money but that's coming okay so yeah that's the c-trip on this i'm talking way too much and i'll see you guys when it's 100 cured hey guys i'm back so the entire day has passed and uh, i can't wait any longer i just got the itch that i need to open this boy up and uh yeah that's what we're gonna do now please disregard the lemon i just harvested it from my garden anyhow it's time to it's time to pop the mold basically according to the book book fuck the tin this resin should go off in about two hours after pouring and it should completely harden in about four to six depending on thickness and um, it's been 24 hours it's been like four layers so worst case scenario it's still squishy but it should be hard so time to make some space and Start hammering this apart. As I said, I don't know if you remember, but you probably remember because it was like two minutes for you, two minutes ago, but I did not put any screws uh, by my making this mold. So, yeah. Okay, it released here. Okay. I wish I have a bigger workshop and not kick everything. So as you can see, typical uh, 
I don't know what shop you have, but the hardware shop uh, lumber. It's called spruce, I think in English. This is the cheapest uh, pine you can get. I use this as a mold. I put some silicone. So basic first thing I do, I put uh, packing tape, sellotape, tape, whatever kind of tape you have. Okay, it doesn't matter. The cheapest brown, white, clear packing tape. You you know what you use in the boxes. Cover it up. Make sure there is no wood surface left open. And then you put a bead of silicone on the bottom and you place it into the mold and make sure you put another bead of silicone uh, at the joining of the bead and the base. Uh, so you, you make sure you cover that too. Hey, more is always better. Or less is more. No, no, no. More is always better. Hey, hey. I'm, I'm strong. I'm a strong, independent boy. I can do this. Ah. Ah. Yeah, I guess. I did the thing. Yay. Yay, me. All right. Uh huh. Yes, tools. Can you see this? Can you see it? Can you? Yes, you can. This is a piece of the wood I forgot to cover. Can you see it? The, the cello tape. I forgot to cover this bit. What happened? It stick to the epoxy and I had to break it. This is what happens. It was on purpose. It was yeah, I did it on purpose just to just to show you how not to do it. It was a hundred percent on purpose. Mm-hmm. It's not a fuck up. It was on purpose. It was just for educational reasons, you know. I'm I can't fail. It's impossible for me to fail because I'm so good at this. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I hit it too hard. I don't want to break it. Don't laugh. Okay? A small hammer can hit hard. Trust me. Uh, funny story of the hammer. <laughs> I used to be a painter and decorator. And I never needed a hammer in my life. And... I was a painter and decorator for about four or five years and I had a house I needed to paint and it was the, the wood, uh, the window, windows and doors were full of nails and I had no way to remove nails so I went to the closest uh, <laughs> hardware store in a dodgiest part in London and I got the cheapest hammer I could buy. And this guy has been traveling with me and helping me out for the last decade. And I never ever needed a bigger hammer than this. Because this guy has been always there with me and it fits in the smallest toolbox I ever had. And I don't have a bigger hammer. <laughs> so that's why I have this funky hammer. Anyway. That's an anecdote. Nothing to do with our current project. So. All right. I'm a little bit stressed out because I'm worried that the whole thing stuck to the bottom and I'm recording this so if I fuck it up I probably just gonna cut this part out and uh, tell you that uh, I lost the footage bad joke okay you know what we're gonna go this I have to send it anyway, so... Ooh, can you see it? Can you see it? I hope you can see it. Ooh, satisfaction. Oh, look at that. Oh my God. Ooh, you guys want to see it? You guys want to see you? 
That was not on purpose. My $5 tripod just falling apart. I'm sorry. I almost broke you. There you go. Hmm. Nice. Very nice. Okay. I need to send this back. It's alright. I can do this. I can. I can send this back. No problem. I have to remove the excess resin, excess cello tape, excess of excess. It's not even as thick as I thought it will be, to be honest. Don't say that what she said. That's what she said. Don't say it. Don't say it. Please don't say it. This is not the office, okay? Anyway. So it's not... A, not a, not as thick as I expected. It <laughs> came out so wrong. I'm so sorry. I have ladies and other people watching this. I'm so sorry. I'm a dirty man. Anyway, let's go. This boy is not as thick as I thought it would be. But it's looking good. Okay, guys. Um, I'm going to cut here. It It's solid. It's ready. It, it it cured very nicely. I'm gonna clean this up off camera because I don't want to waste your time. And uh, and yeah, we'll see how far it goes. See you in a bit. All right, guys. I am going to pre-finish this tabletop which means that I will send it up to 5k and we're gonna do the polishing in a different video because I really want to be consistent on uploading videos and I think for the polishing we could spend some more time and I don't want to make this video way too long okay so I'm going to send this with 400 grit as a starting point and see much see how much I can take off with it nope I will start 180 grit and try to take off the pits here and here and here Okay, that's 180. Ah. Now, this is the point when I clean this thing off from the dust for no reason at all. I'm just, you know, doesn't matter. You don't have to. I managed to get rid of most of the pits. Now, I done 180. Depending what paper you have, you go up one. I have 240. Did I show you right? Yes, I did. You can go up incrementally, one after another. You can bypass one or two, nobody gives a damn. One thing you should know, when you send uh, 240 after 180, 
you are get rid of, getting rid of the scratches you done with the 180 not one, not with what you done with the 120 or earlier you are always removing the scratches from before so make sure that every uh, you you send you send the surface enough at every increment to remove the scratches from the previous uh, layer because otherwise you're gonna have pigtails left in it and all that jazz uh, let me know if you want to have uh, an in detail in-depth uh, video on sending and all that shit uh, the thing is there are so many other great makers did extremely good explanatory and tutorial videos on the internet on sending that I don't think I can add too much to it. I can basically just repeat what they said most of the times. So yeah, watch one of those. And uh, if you still have questions, you know, hit me up and we figure it out. All right. So I hit it with 240 now. Two forty. I need four hundred. Usually, people do three twenty, three eighty, something in the three hundreds. Problem is, I had no three hundreds in the package when I bought the pack. So, but I got like a thousand pieces of four hundred. So I'm gonna do four hundred. Yeah, by the way, one of you have mentioned that I should, I should, uh, like, uh, what, uh, do a disclaimer uh, in my videos to wear proper PPE, gloves, eyes, masks, this is sand, this will go into your lungs and uh yeah epoxy sand not good in lungs you probably die don't do that okay uh use common sense okay i think we are all adults here uh you know what's good for you you know what's bad for you i'm not gonna tell you what to do if you are daredevil if you are johnny knoxville and you, if you feel you are in jackass do whatever i do i grew up in the lost generation nobody gave a fuck what i was doing you know I set fire of, for, of things behind the barn and no one ever batted an eye. I grew up watching Jackass and uh, hey, I'm still here. I don't have too much feeling in my left hand, but hey, it is what it is. So yeah, guys, be adults, do your research, be smart and uh, try not to kill yourself and uh, wear protection. Wear protection. Yeah, you may take it. Yeah, leave the joke in the comment section. Anyway, 400. Here we go. Four hundred. Done. Uh, let's see what I have. Because I forgot. Three thousand. Three thousand. I got these discs from Amazon, and I bought the cheapest sending discs possible, and they're fine. I don't know what is the cheapest where you live because you know Amazon is international and sourcing it from different places. But yeah, they're they're okay. No problem whatsoever. They don't have holes. And uh, if you could let me know in the comment section, please. If it doesn't have holes, it means it is for wet sanding or can you dry sand this too? I forgot to look it up and if we are already here, I might ask you, you know, if you know this. That would be, that would be great if you could share this with me or with the rest of us here. Uneducated masses. Thank you. Now looks like 
Looks like I am a filthy peasant. Yes, sir, I am. And I only have 1,000 grit now. I used to have a box of 800 grit, but I think I ran out and I never ordered anymore. Because of ADHD brain. Okay, this is 5K, I'm gonna need this. This, 5K, 5K. It says here, but I need to look through a light source to see it. Oh, look! Oh, it's a 400. This has been used. Oh, look, an 800. We're gonna use this 800 now. Yay. I, sh I think I shouldn't use this anymore. Uh, what you what you don't want to have is uh, particles attached to your sandpaper because that's gonna leave the pigtails So yeah, just make sure you don't have that 1000 grit uh, uh, There's 1500 here. I'm not gonna do 1500 because I'm way too lazy to do that. I'm gonna do 3000 and You know what one two three thousand yeah, that should do it. So, remind me please that I need to buy 800 grit sandpaper. I have an Alexa here, but it's unplugged because I don't trust her. And I live on an island, so it doesn't even matter if I order it on Amazon, it doesn't deliver here. I'm talking way too much today. I'm just so happy because the channel has started going and people are listening to me and I have so many things to say and I'm not afraid anymore to say it. Anyway, 800 grit. Sanding, wiping. Okay, I done the 800. Now I ew. Now I'm going to clean this sander. By the way, what 5 years of painting and decorating taught me is that it doesn't matter what sort of brush you got, it doesn't matter what sort of roller you got. One thing you have to invest in is a brand sander not a fast tool one because fast tool is is but those guys are tools okay but when 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 i started helping out in construction and shit fast tool was a was a no-name brand that it was cheap as heck okay and because of their car scheme and they look cool and all that jazz they're the most expensive brand you can get, and I hate it. Look, I got this DeVault. DeVault is a um, pretty much indestructible, indestructible brand. Uh, for me, at least, okay? So, from my experience. Probably you have a different experience. That is also fine. We are different people. However, this was about 100 euros. I've been using it for a year basically non-stop every day okay and uh she's still all right no problems whatsoever you clean it once in a while and you know serves you okay so next up is 1k a thousand grit now this is a full disc and i don't know this for sure but some, some, I hope somebody smarter people in the comment section will tell us. But I think you are supposed to wet sand this because there is no place here for for the dust to run uh, run away. Jesus, to escape or get out. So I will use a little bit of water to sand this. Now, be advised, I, <laughs> when I started out, I used 95 alcohol to, 
to wet the surface, okay? And then I started sending it, and then I put alcohol, and I sent it, and the whole thing got heated up and evaporated, and it messed up the epoxy, first of all. Second of all, I got so high as a kite, I could barely breathe, because all my uh, nasal cavities got swollen. So, yeah, water. Totally fine. Perfectly enough. You don't have to go hardcore solvent, okay? You don't need special liquid to cool your... Because you, you only use water to cool the surface. Surface and the... Yeah, you know what I mean. Anyway. And this is the point where I have no idea if I did good enough or I need to go more or or what the heck because yeah so I wing it usually I do two or three passes and I hope for the best honestly because now I don't see if I removed all the previous scratches or no and usually I'm so impatient that uh, I just want to go to the next stage and go to the next stage and go to the next stage without actually doing the current stage completely. Sorry, one sec. You? No, no you don't. I just got the new one out. Um, so I get so impatient here at this stage that I just want to speed through it and see the shiny bit, you know, just to see it shine. So, I don't know, dude. You know, so, yeah, I wing it at this point. Um, but today it doesn't matter, because today we're going to do something interesting. 2K. water this is not mineral water I just don't have a tap here in the workshop so I had to I have to keep some bottled water next to next to everything I do in case uh, fire you know or in case anything happens it's, it's always good to have some water on hand so yeah that's also a, what is it called life hack or whatever this you know extremely popular channels do I'm just gonna say it just keep some water with you Two K and now we're gonna hit it with three uh, K This is going to be a longest video Sorry about that. Yay. There we go. Okay. Get rid of all the particles and all that. And wipe it clean and dry. If you're patient enough and take your time here you would be able to see if you left out a bit or you should go back. Oh uh, yeah, I see some pigtails here from about uh, 400 grit. You can't see it, but I can see it. But if I look extremely close, that's the only time I can see it. Anyway, we don't care about it right now because we're gonna resend it when we do the polishing. I just wanna give you a quick overview of what's happening. And I really wanna try out something special which I'm gonna show you in a minute. All right, 5K. <laughs> That's a bit too much. I'm gonna spread it. Yay. Okay. 
And I'm calling it. Now. A little introduction to our next chapter. I am subscribed to a channel called The Gentleman's Gazette. And I'm subscribed to this channel because I just love style. I love clothing, I love men's clothing, and I like classic styles. And that's why I'm, I, I like to, I know it doesn't look like it, but I like to dress like a gentleman. And I like to learn about etiquette and stuff. Anyway, on that channel recently, actually yesterday, there was a video about shoe shining. And there was this dude there who is like the world shoe shine champion. Yes, that is a thing actually. Where people have a championship on who can make the shiniest shoe which I find extremely interesting and because I like my shoes shiny whenever I wear them because now I live on an island and I don't wear shoes anymore uh, anyway so I watched the video and long story short the dude only used wax some water and a little bit of alcohol to create a shine which was literally a goddamn mirror finish on a piece of dull leather like like what we have here in epoxy now i am quite sure i'm not gonna achieve that level of shininess especially because i i one i don't have that kind of shoe shine i can't get the cool shoe shine outdated reference send me a message no leave a comment if you know what i was talking about but i only have this wax which is a general purpose furniture beeswax and i only have microfiber towels but i wanted to give it a go so this is what we're gonna do now and experiment a little at the end of this video what the guy said is you should apply the wax in thin layers onto the surface. Well, that's not a thin layer. Thin layers. And you can use your hand, you can use a rag, you can use whatever you want. But make sure that you apply a thin layer. Now the dude is using like special wax for shoes and it's solvent based and it has all the magical properties you know you need i'm not gonna use this rag guys because this rag is it's hardened and i don't want to scratch up the surface right now so anyway dude was using the special wax for shoes i don't have that but we're gonna have some fun here because why not So when you apply this wax, what you do is you build it up in layers, which means that you apply a layer of wax, you wait for the solvent from the wax to evaporate, which will harden the wax, and then you apply another thin layer of wax on top of it. This will create a thick layer, thick I mean, in quotation marks a thick layer which you can start to polish down okay this layer is not even so imagine imagine like one two three four five layers of wax and the top of this layer is like this okay so it's not flat and uh, what you do is you get a piece of rag and you start polishing it with the rag you add a little worker just just how i did it with the with the sanding discs and you smoothen that wax out to a mirror finish. So you melt it a little and you smoothen it. And uh, that's what, that's how you basically do a mirror shine on a shoe. <laughs> you, I bet you a hundred bucks you never thought you were gonna learn about shoe shining here. But anyway, 
And I was thinking, I might be able to apply this to my to my uh, epoxy art here. The only thing is, this thing, this wax, has no solvent in it. This wax is made for wood, and it was made for uh, it was made for wood to soak into the wood. Oh my god, I shouldn't have done that. I waxed the sides, but right now, because I waxed the sides, I can't apply any kind of finish to it, and I wanted to paint the edges. Anyway, disregard the edges today. We will deal with that later. So, next up, we should get a piece of cloth to shine this bastard up. Now, as I said, the problem with this wax is this guy never dries. So, I am going to buff it, as it is. Okay, so, results, it sucks. It's kind of shiny, kind of not. It's going to give you, if you do what I just done, it's going to give you a silky finish. I don't know if you can see it on the video. Let me try this. Can you see this? It's like a silk finish. Anyway, so that's that. I could use some crystal coating. And that is literally wax, well, not wax, it's ceramic crystals in a carrier. I use this on my motorbike and my car to give it nice shine. So you do this, you apply it. You can buy the proper ceramic coating to your materials, but it's very expensive and I think this is good enough. You know, it's just for show. Sure. Alright. Okay. Okay. Wear gloves. My cat scratched my finger and it hurts now. So yeah, wear gloves. Don't do as I do. So I wanted to talk, I wanted to talk to you about where my head is. Okay, good. So I'm visible. So I wanted to talk to you about table legs and how to get cheap table legs. Now when I went on Amazon and wanted to buy table legs for my products, I found that the cheapest set of table legs are 50, uh, 30, 40, 50 bucks, the usable ones, 40, 50 bucks. Then I looked into cheap Chinese MDF knockoff furniture. And I found tables and tables, side tables for as cheap as 16 to 18 euros. And guess what all of them had? Legs. So what I've done is I bought a cheap end table with welded metal legs. So this is called pin legs. It's gonna have a plastic end cap on top of it. And I got all the, I, whoops. So I got all the iron mongery to put it together, okay? And you can put it on the bottom in the four corners. Hence table legs, you know what I mean? And I paid, for this set, 
I paid 16 euros with delivery, which is dirt cheap. I know it's just a welded, welded piece of iron, but it's really hard to get proper legs here. So I got this uh, with a little square MDF board as well. I'm probably gonna use it for some painting or graffiti or whatever. So yeah, this is how you can get cheap table legs for your products or for your art. However, I managed to get a table stand, which is like this and this round base with a metal pipe. And that is going to be the leg of this table because this table is triple the weight as I originally thought it will be. So I will use this round table stand for it and we will see how it looks. So, yeah. Ceramic coating has dried. Let's get back to where we were. Yoink. There we go. And I need some clear microfiber again. Thank God they make this here because it's dirt cheap. And I will lightly buff this guy up. Okay, this is just to finish this video. This is just to finish this video. Yeah, I think I should stop doing this right now. Hey guys, check this out. I think I salvaged it. So, please disregard the edge because that's not done yet. That will come when we're gonna do the shine, the mirror polishing. I just done a basic 5k finish on it and as you can see it doesn't really mirror my hand it's kind of a dull don't know, can you see the reflection of the yeah so that's the dull shine and uh, yeah please disregard the edges because that's not done yet I just wanted to get this out of the door because this video is long enough already so this is it all right uh thank you very much for joining me on this video and uh, in the next uh episode of this tables video we are going to fix these bubble holes here or we try to fix them as much as possible we're gonna finish up the edge and we are going to polish it up with that cheap ass polisher we are we, i have bought so yeah join me for the next one and uh, thank you very much for watching and let me know what you think of it in the comments i'll see you guys in the next one bye